Do you want to get the amazing look of individually placed bricks in a fraction of the time without using a foam roller or drawing them in one by one with a pen? I'm going to show you how with the use of this new awesome jig from Shifting Lands coming right up on Tabletop Witchcraft. Hey there, and welcome back to Tabletop Witchcraft. This week, we're going to build a stone archer tower that I was inspired to make by watching The Witcher. And there's a whole bunch of these towers around the perimeter of the city of Sintra. Now, I knew I wanted to make little stone bricks to go around this whole thing. And after I had the idea, I'm like, man, this is going to take me forever. And I got an idea. This new brick jig from Shifting Lands. I called up Gerard. We toyed around with the idea. Uh, we've been working on this for over a month, trying to get it just right. And I'm going to show you how to use this in the video to place the bricks on that tower. I did all of that in about two and a half hours, the entire thing. So awesome jig. It's in the video. I'll show you how to use it. Also, don't forget TWC10 at Firelight Fables Candle Company. Give you 10% off your entire order and a small kickback comes to me. All right, if you're ready, let's go grab some supplies and our brick jig and let's get crafting. All right, I'm going to kick this video off with the On Ocean Tides candle from Firelight Fables Candle Company. I used this candle because Sintra is like a coastal city, but honestly, I couldn't find out what body of water it was on. So if you know, leave a comment in the description below uh, because I honestly, I, I could not find it. Now I'm going to try and make use of some items laying around the house for this build. I'm using an oatmeal container, a supplement container that I had laying around. Now you can easily make the base of this build out of, you know, solid blocks of foam if you want. You can use an oatmeal container. You can even take some chipboard and form it into a cylinder and use that because we're gonna coat this whole thing in some really awesome bricks from a new brick jig that I've been designing with Shifting Lands. So yeah, I can't wait to show that off. Now to make this piece usable, as well as the supplement container we're gonna use in just a few minutes, I'm just gonna fill the top and bottom with a piece of foam cut perfectly with the circle jig from Shifting Lands. Now magnets are gonna be our friend in this build because we're gonna have three playable levels. And you've seen me do this plenty of times using just a little bit of that glue that comes out of the top of that magnet. That's gonna hold and lock that in place so it doesn't pop out when we're using it. Here's the supplement container. Now, if you grab the plans, I appreciate it. It helps support the channel. Just follow along, and it's gonna help you with all the dimensions to get these right. And this tower is sort of like, there's a whole bunch of these in the wall that surrounds Sintra. So if you look up The Witcher, check it out, check the town out, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. And this is the same method we did, only on a smaller scale with that oatmeal container. You're gonna see there's a little bit of an issue with that not being perfectly level here in a few minutes. Not a big deal, I'm gonna show you how to remedy that. We're just gonna slice it off on the Proxon. I'll show you a cool little tip uh, to get a little bit more height out of that as well. Now using that stencil, it's just gonna allow us to get this middle portion of the tower exactly centered on the entire build. And you've seen this technique before where we just use a little bit of paint on one piece to mark identical spots on the other piece of foam for our magnet placement. If you're enjoying this video and my channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button down below. All right, now this was one of my problem areas where it wasn't perfectly level, not an issue. I went back with some foam. I ended up ripping that piece off that I glued on there, broke out the level because it just would have looked really funky if that piece right there wasn't perfectly flat. So we get that level again. We're gonna cover up that piece of aluminum foil here in a few minutes. Now we need some more filler, and this is gonna be for the very top of the craft. So I'm using this foam. I don't really like using it too much, but again, it's all gonna be covered up, so why not use this and save our pink XPS for something else? Using the plans, you can see how we can get our angle just right on the top of this piece for the dome. And really, it just takes some practice playing with the 
uh, procs on when you're trying to do this. Sliding the uh, piece of foam up to the hot wire while you have the pedal on, the foot pedal really helps out a lot. Now you see I cut a piece of the center of that foam out. That's because I took the wire out from the proxon and threaded it through that so I don't have any cuts going into this piece of foam from the outside. All right, now there's the top of the dome for the tower. And as you can see, we are using this circle cutter a lot in this video. You know, you can do the video without it, but man, I tell you, it really makes it a lot easier having it. And don't throw away all these little pieces that you're cutting off. They can become useful down the road in other crafts that you know, you really had no idea you'd want it for. So perfectly round pieces of foam, anything that's very specific like that, kind of hang on to them. You never know when you're going to need them. All right, now what I'm doing here is I'm actually going to use a, another piece of foam. This piece I didn't like, it was too small, but the principle is going to be the same. So I left this part here in the video. Using the hot wire knife, you can use an X-Acto, an Ulfa knife. You just want to create that little bit of an angle there because that's going to make this piece fit nice and flush on top of the white piece of foam that we had uh, for the top or the roof. Okay, back to the plans. This is going to allow us to get these cutouts just right, spaced nice and evenly around the entire build. Again, here you could use the hot wire knife, but it's a little bit cleaner if you use an X-Acto, a sharp X-Acto. You little sneak peek there of the bricks. I can't wait to show you how this is gonna work. Now there's a piece that I ended up using. You can see it's a lot thinner. It's a lot larger to fit on the top of the dome. And all I'm doing right now is marking out the window placement for our archers to shoot out of. Okay, now we can move on to the front door, I guess, for this entire build. The tower from the movie or the show doesn't have a door, but you know, I'm making this as an archer tower, so I needed to have one. And here's a cool little tip, using some fine grit sandpaper to smooth down your foam. You just wanna make sure that you don't have a lot of buildup of XPS dust under there. Number one, you don't wanna breathe that in, but two, it can kind of gum up and then tear the foam. So just keep that in mind. Take your time. Don't build up a lot of heat when you're using sandpaper on foam. I've done this method for making these front doors or archways for building since, you know, probably before my even castle build that I had on the channel. All you do is you just keep cutting out one piece and reducing the width on it, and it makes a really nice, you know, uh, recessed look for the door. And I almost didn't even add this. I, this is like the something I did at the very end of the video, and I decided, what the heck, I made it, I'll add it. It was just a metal gate that's gonna go in front of the entire door. The reason we made that cut right there and the cut on this piece of granny grating, again, is because this is gonna be playable on the interior, so obviously this has to come apart. All right, and I really wanted some nice definition around the door, so I'm cutting this out and making some depressions in it with a clay sculpting tool. The reason I wanted to do that is because our bricks that we're going to cover this entire build with are gonna have so much detail to them. They're not at all going to look like they were just drawn in with a pencil or a pen or rolled on there with a foam roller. So I wanted the front door archway to match the bricks for the entire build. Now when you glue this on, make sure you don't glue that top part of the door to the bottom. Again, that's gotta separate. All right, I'm super excited for this part right here. You wanna take a thin piece of XPS foam, just like that, add some texture to it. Now you're gonna place it in this brick jig. This thing is totally awesome, super easy to use, 
and it's going to allow you to brick this entire building in a fraction of the time it would take to place individual bricks and it's going to look exactly as if you used individual bricks for this entire build. I like using the foot pedal, but it's, you're making a lot of constant cuts here, so you can actually just turn the procs on on, and using this sawtooth piece of the jig, just line up the wire and burn a hole right through there. Popping it out, we're all set for some nice strips of bricks, and we're going to then just slice these uh, right across on the procs on, and it's going to give us a ton of strips. I bricked this entire build on Discord with my patrons one night in about two and a half hours. This would have taken me, I'm not even kidding, probably a week if these bricks, you know, if I use bricks of this size to, you know, coat the entire craft. I literally did it in about two, two and a half hours. The reason I'm rolling the edge there is because I want to have a little bit of the illusion of a grout line on the horizontal portion of these as well. Look how fast and awesome this is. I mean, I probably just did, oh, I don't know, 20 or 30 bricks in about two seconds right there. Offsetting the grout lines, the vertical grout lines, and it's going to leave you with a really awesome look. And use no way you can tell that these bricks aren't individually placed. Now, when you cut the thickness of the brick, as you can see, I like to offset the thickness just a little bit on a couple of passes on the strips. It adds another really cool illusion of individually placed bricks around this entire thing. It's actually kind of satisfying, to be honest with you, putting these on here. You can see how it sticks real easy with some hot glue. We don't have to wait for um, you know, tacky glue or any other type of PVA glue. One, two, three, and we got this whole thing bricked up. And the nice thing about this jig is they're gonna come in two different sizes in a kit. So when you buy it, you're gonna get two different sizes, this smaller version and a much larger version. That's always been a pet peeve of mine when people go to brick something and they call it bricks and they're like, you know, 50 times the size of what a brick should actually be. Granted, these are still larger than what a brick would be, but it's very much closer to scale than cutting something, say, three quarters of an inch long. All right, now this stencil right here is going to allow us for marking out the placement of these supports around the top portion of the archer tower. Grabbing this little piece here from the plan, Super easy, we're gonna cut this out to shape and just like we did with the brick jig, we're gonna slice a whole bunch of these all at once. And we're just gonna hot glue them into place after we cut this little notch out for each one. I don't like just gluing these right to the brick. It doesn't have that illusion that it's actually supporting anything because you can see it from the sides, like just resting up against the brick. So cut these out, take a few minutes and depress them, I guess, or recess them into the brick face. All right, now here's another small issue I wanted to point out, that little gap right there. Uh, you know, not a problem. Um, I had already put these magnets in. Just heat them up with the tip of your hot glue gun. They'll pop right out. Another awesome tip, get a piece of PVC pipe. Place that behind the arm of your Proxon. Be careful so you don't break it. I got an extra inch of height out of this. The only thing you got to keep in mind, you see right here, I'm going to be leveling that surface so I don't have to worry about that gap. The only thing you gotta keep in mind is you need to make sure you adjust the wire of that proxon so it's nice and vertical. But you can get another inch of cutting space out of that just by adding that PVC pipe. All right, now this is gonna be a playable surface. I didn't wanna see these magnet holes. Using some of this light patch and paint, we're gonna place that right over the top and then just sand it down. You're never gonna notice it. We'll hit this up with a little texture tool or some aluminum foil and it's gonna be completely hidden. All right, now when I was building this initially, you can see I'm using my tip there to get that extra inch of height so we can make this nice clean cut. The perimeter of the first level needed something. It was way too simple or plain looking. So I made this little ring to go around the entire top. It looked really good. Plus it covers the top of the bricks. You can see we're gonna place it right here. That would have looked kind of funky if I didn't place this ring on top.
Okay, now much like we did the support for the top portion of this tower, we're going to use this to cut out the bottom supports. This is another add-on. I thought it still looked a little simple. You don't have to get crazy here. Look how tiny that piece of foam is. I'm going to cut those into a whole bunch around this thing. I think I used like 20 of them. And that little tiny piece, but wrapped around the entire thing, really made that stand out and look awesome. All right, you know me, hot glue. Got to use that, keep myself moving along. And back to our brick jig. Again, I can't speak enough about this. This is just such an absolutely awesome tool. Look at how many bricks we just placed there. There's no way you can tell that those weren't uh, individual bricks. And another thing is it allows you to have a nice horizontal space so that your bricks look nice and level and they're not kind of jagged or look like they're at an angle. All right, my wheel of time build, my building I had in that, you've seen this, it's the shingle jig. I believe I used this in my stable build as well. You wanna cut these nice and thin and look at the, I guess, diameter that you can have with using these. All I'm using is some tacky glue. I used a little bit of hot glue to tack down the very first bit on some of these when I got really tight on that diameter but you can see there in the background, I was able to wrap those all the way around to within a half inch of those shingles. Looked really good. All right, now once this is Mod Podged, we're breaking out that patch and paint, and we're gonna give ourselves a really cool mortar look to all of these bricks. You wanna use a glove, press this stuff into there, but here's what you don't wanna do. You don't wanna rub it back and forth, back and forth, because there is a little bit of grit to that, and it will take away some of the texture on your foam. Don't be afraid, you know, to wipe this down with a wet paper towel. Uh, you know, again, it's going to cure. It might take a day or so, but it's going to leave you with a really awesome look once you're done. Okay, now I needed some flags, and I was toying around with actually sewing some fabric flags together, um, taking one piece of fabric and painting it, and then I decided, you know what? I'm going to make flags out of green stuff. Uh, it's going to look really cool, uh, a lot easier. And honestly, I don't think I've used green stuff in a while, so I just made a frame out of some wire. The two smaller flags, I'm not worried at all about the back. They're gonna be glued to the tower. You're never gonna see them. But this one right here, just make sure you have a really good front and back to it, because you're gonna be able to see around the entire flag. It's gonna be the one on the very top of the tower. All right, you can pause the video. I got a couple of um, little clips here of how I painted this. A lot of different paint coats and layers and washes to achieve the look of the stone here. One thing I want to point out, bottom right, that's my black wash. Do not wash the entire thing when you're done painting it. You almost want to dry brush the black wash on this. That way all of your grout doesn't turn black. Now for some final details, I'm gonna just take some more black wash and run it down where the water would constantly be dripping down the tower on these supports. And then with a warm white, we're gonna do one final dry brush very lightly over all the stone. And I absolutely am in love with how real this stone looks. Then we take our archer windows. I just glued those to the top portion. Again, that needs to be able to separate, so don't glue them on that seam, just put them over the seam. And then we can glue and place our flags on here, paint these up any color you like. And those are all set. And one final touch, I painted up a bird, which looks like an eagle in a metallic color and put them right on top. And this is all set and ready for the game table. Okay, I think this craft is probably one of my most favorite that I've ever made. I love the shape, the design. 
It's really cool. It's versatile. You could actually use my windmill or my observatory with this placed right on top of that as well. Something to keep in mind. I love the paint scheme. I'm so happy I took my time with that. I'm really happy with the overall look of this. The grout looks great. And I can't say enough about the brick jig from Shifting Lands. You're going to get this in a set of two small and large brick. Time saver, incredible. One of the best time savers for a jig that I've ever used. This thing would have taken me days if I didn't have this. Two and a half hours, start to finish. You can pick this up at Shifting Lands and Shifting Lands USA. I plan on using this in an upcoming video shortly on the channel to show more versatility with this jig. And if you want inside scoop, I showed that jig off to my patrons probably two or three weeks ago now. And we have a lot of fun at night hanging out in Discord. People hang out with me live right here while I'm crafting these videos and making some really fun stuff. So I'd love to have you join the family as well. And that really helps fund the channel and keeps it growing. Don't forget, like and subscribe. And until next time, I'll see you around.